close here and open this window. Can you all see my screen there? Awesome. Thank you, Renee, for, for nodding. Um, there's the size as well. So I've left this prices right, kind of for the last part of this shift cycle um, that we've done because we're going into the MREA 24 topics from next week, Tuesday. Beautifuls, I want to please ask you to start diving into that MREA and start reading a time block and just start reading it, getting the hang of it. Because everything that you've done in Ignite and then the shift training that I've had is power packing it. And then we're going to go into the MREA. There is other information that is in that book that has created so many millionaires that you want to capitalize from. During the MREA 24 topics, you are going to have these moments where your brain's going to go, yo, I've heard that. Because into the winter, as we go into winter, we're going to go 36, 12, 3. 36 transactions in 12 months from three hours of lead generation. Because then we're going to power pack it all. As you guys that has been my most loyal customers with all this training up to here today, you're going to get off to, uh, you know, at the end of 36, 12, 3, and you're going to go, what am I doing? Things need to go to another level. And I'm going to then also bring another cycle of the shift training in. Um, some of the material that I've done on this cycle, I'm going to tweak and bring back. But there is so many different topics. This cycle that I've presented was topics that I've identified in 2021 from my clients, you know, you, the agents, from conversations of, oh, Rola, I needed this or I needed that. And I've left the price for the last part. Because it is probably one of the most sensitive topics all the time. And, and, and what I want to say is, money is not, always, it's not a nice conversation. People don't like that. And now, you know, and you are, need to be sort of sensitive because if you're going to go and do a valuation on that auntie's house that she's owned for 21 years, she's been calculating her growth her entire life. And then she is at 3.6 million and you walk in and you only say 2.2. Can I tell you what that story around the bri is going to be? <laughs> Don't ask that in a poppy to come and do a valuation around here. She says she's got 20 years experience, but it's got no clue what it's talking about. She says my property is only 2.2. Can you see the ripple effect? We have to forever educate people that it's an opinion and that it's a service. You are not in control of that coffee, that milk, that bread. It's not your, I mean, you've got the products, but it's not a full retail. So, I know that's quite a sensitive slide, because if you look at it, it's like, hello, can you please determine whether you're the smartest kid in the class? We will send you a little test, and then we will revert back. <laughs> it's not that. What I want to ask you is, how do you know if your listings is overpriced? When was the last time you've pulled your stock list and you did stock take? Cash up a little bit in your business. Look at your total units. Look at your total stock value. Like your spaza shop. How much is in that shop and what is the, the equity value of that? Andre, please speak to me. Um, biggest one, if it's not selling, it's, it's overpriced, honestly. Yes, 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 yes. The only reason something doesn't sell is price. Think for yourself. My mug and bean. Monday morning, 8 o'clock, I baked this mango muffin. It's the special of the day, and I give it the cream. My shop's full Monday. And it was the special of the day. I mean, I've put the effort, I've put the ingredients, I've baked the muffins. It's on the shelf of the 20 for the day. One goes. One person was interested. 
Tuesday happens. So I'm still pushing it in the red because I want to get maximum of it out at that price because I need to cover my costs and make some money. Now it's Tuesday afternoon. Of the 20, I baked Monday morning. Another two customers take a mango and cream. What happens by Wednesday? Now, yeah, I'm stuck as a business owner. Now, now that cream is most not getting that slight crust. And I'm in in the fridge and I'm out of the fridge. And what, what, and four o'clock in the morning, I'm lying awake and I'm thinking, dude, if you don't offload X today, you're going to be at a loss. Because by Thursday, the mango is going to start browning. By Friday, the quality of the bake of the muffin is going to start getting fraught. What is the implication by Sunday morning? And now by Thursday morning, after I've li uh, lied awake the whole night, I'm going, uh, dude, let's think about this. Okay. Where it was 17 rand a muffin, it's now 12. But it must go because I must cover costs. Yet, nobody takes the mango and the cream. What happens Saturday morning, Sunday morning? <sighs> File 13 in the dustbin. What happened with the mango muffin? Zero. We're not going to have it on the recipe, on the plan again. Yet everybody asked for it. Okay? When we say, what would be that thing you would love on the menu? Or oh, a mango and cream. So we gave it the mango and cream. Mm -mm. Was it because of the flavoring wasn't right? Was it the presentation that wasn't right? Or did we introduce it that Monday morning at the wrong price? Because if we didn't have it at 17 and we maybe started at 12 and then had quicker units, would it made a difference? And I want to bring you to right price mastery. And pricing only comes the more you do it and the more observant you are, the better you learn the trends. It's mindset. That is the first thing. You need to get your head around the game about mindset, about price, 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 price. I'll tell you why I'm talking about mindset and why it's important. Because... I can introduce you agents. 200 listings. 200. Zero sale. Well, it takes the sale, but it doesn't convert. So on the production, I don't have facts to determine where does this. Okay? After breaking it, remember the day when I recruited you as your team leader. Now I'm your business consultant. Now I need to make you aware of where the shortcomings is. Brilliant seller presentation. Really qualifies the buyers. Overprices, doesn't ask for the offer to close the deal. Two problems are identified. And once that is identified and you understand that if I get better at my closings and asking for the offer, or the better I get at pricing, the quicker conversion, quicker money. Scripts. And again, please create your own scrapbook with your own scripts. There is in Keller Williams a script and an answer for everything. Learn what to say to price it correct. Get confident and practice it on somebody or in front of the mirror. But you have to be in control of those scripts so that you can empower yourself in controlling this pricing. Have a system in, plan, in place. What do I mean with having a system in place? Is if you start at X, you're going to have bring it to X and you're going to sell it at X if case B. Those pricing parameters. When we capture it here, this day and time, we're going to price reduce. This day in time. That mandate presentation that you did. That calendar you've put in front of the client where you say, this day and time, this is going to happen. This day and time, this is going to happen. Then private property, then property 24. Then we're going to do price reduction. Then we're going to have a show house. 
those systems on how does a product get introduced into the market and what would the flow be? What are the measurable uh, 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 things we're going to put in place so that we can have something to discuss the results? Because here is normally the second conversation you're going to have after the second show day with your seller. <coughs> Two show houses, 20 buyers, zero offers. What is the conclusion? Is there something wrong with my house? Well, the pink bathroom is not that super sexy and um, listed at um, 9.x is not ideal. Uh, let me just, somebody wants to get in here. Oh, Vanita Governor. Let me just click for her. Right. So... Here we go. I'm back on track. Pricing right happens twice. Two chances. Please big. There, page 135 of the shift book. Go and read it. Tactic number seven there. Pricing right happens twice. First with you. Then with the seller. From there... The market starts dictating it. And if the market starts dictating the price, my please tell you where your commission goes. Then the market starts dictating your commission. That thing that sounds like six becomes three. After vats and all sorts of rah rah is two. You, you know, really? Why would you start the process today to land up 120 days later at two? Doesn't make sense. Mega agent mindset. That that mindset you're going to go into these presentations of yours and knowing your pricing. My job is to get the home sold. Finish and clock. You know that story? I'm going to sell your house in the shortest time for the highest price with the less hassle. That beautiful little liner. Ne? It is exactly that. Listen, a for sale sign is super sexy. But when a sold sign goes up, Dan maak my voete feiste van lekker kry. Verstaan jy? En hear me out, I can put a salt sign, uh, <laughs> I can dress a house like a Christmas boom, it will be all over the show. And <laughs> a salt sign, I put it in everybody's faces. Those buyers that I had through that property didn't make the offer. The moment I made it sold on, uh, on edge, I saw me send them a little uh, 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 campaign key like, sorry you missed out, seeing you at the next one. Hear me out. I am the expert. Say what you mean and mean what you say. But and, and the information that comes out. Remember the five second rule? Order in your mind. Be selfish about your time. Know what you say. The 14 day mindset. What does that mean? It's, it's like, let's say you're not going through McDonald's. They've launched. What is that? They had that Rolo uh, uh, milkshake. About a year or so ago, two years ago, whatever. Here's my story. What happened when the Rolo uh, milkshake was launched? <laughs> the drive through was blocked. Everybody wanted to try it, to decide. Personally, I mean, there's no Rolo chocolate brand, any variant of it that I haven't had in one lifetime being called Rolo. Let me... Uh, 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 Sorry, you missed out. Bah, good one. You're welcome, Renal. So, can you? So, if you, you know, then not everybody bought that milkshake. So, that launching into the market, how you put it in, presentation, reaction, you know, that 14 day mindset. Before I introduce it to the free market, I'm first going to quickly email it to my current people to say, before it goes in the newspaper, private property, property 24. Have a look. Have a little private viewing. There's nothing a seller finds more sexy when you say to them, where is so? I'm not going to put it immediately on the newspapers. Private property, property 24. Because it is so perfectly priced and the property is bringing so much to the table, it's really the hottest buy in the suburb today. I'm going to invite my A++ and my A++ agents um, in our network to say, hold on, 
you're welcome to bring your bias after the f first 45 days, but I think I'm probably going to close this myself. You see that 14 day mindset, push, 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 create the energy and the activity around that muffin before you get to Sunday to go it back. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's always the price mindset. Like you will not go to bed if you are not in contract for an offer or in contract for a mandate. You are not going to bed if you are not busy price counseling something. In our world, the only thing that is important is that number. But somebody must control that number in conversation the whole time because you want an outcome for the number the whole time. Work that number. 1.6 is the valuation. We're going to mandate at 1.4. When you wake up in the morning, you're going to go, mm -mm, the fat auntie in the small flat on the 19th floor, sorry for her, 700 today is 500. Because it has to convert. It has to come money. Whatever you do today in real estate only shows up 90 days later. So that's a scary thing I'm saying there is no such thing as infantry. Exactly what I was trying to say there is 200 listings, but nothing sells. I mean, that is super sexy infantry, but I don't know what you do with that. It's, it's not a business. It, 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 it is a business that's up for auction and liquidation if you sit with it. But if there's five mandates and two are selling in the next 30 days and we are remandating another three that are selling the day after, that is an inventory conversation. <coughs> there are two best pricing opportunities. During the mandate and after it's gone to the market. Obviously, the market needs to respond to it. And I want to just remind you a thing. A property has got five prices. What the seller is willing to take, what the buyer is willing to pay, what it is actually going to sell for on the market at the end of the day when it goes through that stamped deeds office. Then the other two, bank valuation, we want to keep as high as possible because it's got an effect on your credibility and, and your, your total estate equity, what you've built in your life. Then the other one is the government value. We want to keep that one as low as possible because of the rates and taxes and the holding costs we need to pay on it. Again, and we've had this before, you have to become the expert. Use the career growth initiative, the CGI. If you go on to Edge, it's VOOP second uh, where, uh, uh, tag on the right pipeline and then go and fill it in. You can change it all the time. It is available in Agent Toolkit in a spreadsheet. Please revert again back to my 135411 conversation we had the second um, um, shift training, where you have to know your numbers to understand what is the business you're building. The cowboy method of hit and run is going to have a hit and run result. That agent track trend report. What did you do last week? What did you do this week? Track your numbers the whole time. Can I please explain to you how scary it is when you... Uh, 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 and I know you can have the world's experience, but... Tracking your numbers all the time is cashing up. You have to cash up in your business on a daily basis. Can you imagine the mug and bean doesn't cash up in Ivongo Mall argumentatively? Where, where will that business be in three months' time? Identify your strengths with the language of real estate, the Lua report. This is what's sold in the suburb, and this is where I'm part of. This is what's currently in the infantry on the market. I am mandated for X. Otherwise, just 
Use the numbers from Lightstone because it creates the impression with the people. Here, Poppy knows what's happening around here. We need to check this with us, Poppy. She understands this market. She controls the suburb. That's why everybody talks about her as the preferred agent around the bride. Educate sellers with a talking pad. All I'm trying to say is with a talking pad is blame shifting is sometimes a very sensitive thing, if I can put it like that. And whatever we've discussed during the valuation, and I know we send super sexy letters out to the sellers afterwards, right? And then we, we now come back for the photo shoot and now it's all going to happen. Yeah, and people don't always remember what they say. And then they afterwards come and say, Nia, my, uh, uh, I was thinking maybe we should. That talking pad is document discussions, set milestones, set dates. What do we want to achieve by X date? You know, your mandate presentation and, and, and your suggestion to your seller about how are we going to go forward with this process to get you the highest price for this time, you know. There's a the time, there's a date for when and what we want to achieve because there's a number implication attached to it. And this is almost where I want to come to uh, uh, that part of parameter pricing. Because if there's a talking pad, and your seller is a little bit inclined to overprice because he's very emotional about the dog's funeral the kids had 16 years ago in the corner of the stand. Um, and, and, you know, that beautiful tree that was planted by his late mother 12 years ago. Have you heard these stories? Please can I make you scream for a second? You can ask my husband whenever he's on a call. You can ask JC's brother. We had a listing. They've owned the property. Thank you, Renal, for confirming. 30 years, beautiful small holding. Eight hectares, what, what. They've built an extra factory and then they've built a house. Then they build a new house 20 years later. Then they added cottages. Then the one son had a... But I mean, it's all very nicely done. And I mean, these people have got great help. Nee? There's big money. They were married something like 50 odd years, whatever. Bless his soul, the old woman crossed over. What does she do? Because she thought she's also going to die on the property. She didn't realize that she is not going to die at 70, that she's actually going to eat a cricket score of 95. I will let you know. What does she do? She puts the grave slab bank six meters right of the swimming pool in the front lawn, beautiful lily garden. Time passes and then she reaches 90. Do you think at the age of 90 you can still maintain eight hectares with staff and tractors and whatever? Now the property needs to be sold, but the um, and this beautiful granite gravestone sits slab bang next to your swimming pool. <laughs> and I mean, I'm talking about a 25 million rand piece of real estate here. So, so just be aware of these things, that talking pad. Because one of the talking pads there was, Tony, as much as we love your property and we really know we're going to sell it, I know we're 25, sell it at 23. The realization is you'll have to dig up the whim and I don't know, because a buyer is not going to, because then she still wanted to have the rights for the children and those living there after. There must be an endorsement that they can come and see the grave. I mean, hello, you wake up Sunday morning whilst you're busy brushing your teeth. Here's an auntie at the gate. Hola, I've got a right. Can I please see the grave? That's not going to go down. The emotion and the process of packing up this entire process. Dear seller, 
are you okay to supply us on this date the certificate? And please write it down. Let's make notes about it that we don't forget about the milestones we want to achieve. What was the end result? Um, in a three years later, the property is still in the market. The children are now looking after the property. Um, the one daughter moved back to look after mom's health. Um, I think they're really just waiting for her then to cross over. Um, and they, I know it sounds horrible, but nobody is going to make decisions. There's too many children, too many cooks in the kitchen, you know, that story. Too much money. Um, and after 50 years of owning a property to pack, 50 years of life is a lot. So that's the honest truth. No, it's the, we, we're waiting for her to cross over and then the children will make decisions. It's scary, no? <laughs> yeah. Can't have the listing. There's problems. <laughs> um, what was the conversation there as well is that because of the emotion of 50 years of life, we statistically... All the numbers. It would probably have sold between 21, 22. But we would have used parameter advertising to educate the seller on the process in the market. So asking price, 25. Offers from two point, uh, from 24. Because then we would have still, at our commission, get her her 23. Or 22 and a half. Then we would reduce the asking price to 24 offers from. We're still at 22 plus my six. It's always where your seller is at. Go there and then you set your parameters. But bottom line is your asking price is changing at the top the whole time and not your net price that covers your commission in your mandated agreement with your client seller. Does that make sense what parameter advertising is? Please do not use it on your ads on private property, property 24. But with the listing moderation, they're going to kick it back and say to you is that um, you, you, you can't use parameter advertising. But in your explanations to your clients to affect the price reduction in their mind and to still keep to the net price, it works very well. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. I just want to open this door here. Yeah? Okay, here I am. Are you still okay? Are you all I'm still having fun and learning something? Because I see the faces and everybody is participating. That's what I love about the cameras, because the faces are participating. I don't feel like a total clown screaming at the screen all the time. So remember I told you the story about the five prices. Okay? That is really just the explanation of for your you know like we've got the five d's there's the starting conversation with the seller but three prices for every home the premium price the 2.5 what it's going to sell at and what the maybe the buyer is willing to pay or pay for it and i've put it there like premium meaning it's the the highest market related that middle one and then wholesale it sounds a little bit retaily doesn't it seeing that we are talking about our mug and beans and is this thing clicking oh there it's going okay look at that graph there 
So I, I kept it, and you'll see we're going to go through the next slides. We're going to first do the trend and condition argument. Then we're going to discuss seller's market, buyer's market, and then the extreme shifts, and then use, use price. So on the left there, you'll see there's the improving market right at the top. And then I talk about softening market. That's your trend on the left. On the right is model home, meaning it is the Victoria's Secret. Time and condition, and they neglect, deferred, or the maintenance on it. It's always the condition of the property. We say location, location, location. I get it. Location is the first thing of it all. And then when we start breaking it down, it breaks down into this. So if it is an improving market, interest rates staying low and there's a lot of, you know, and the prices are going up. You're going to achieve that price. <clears throat> if it is coming down, lesser stock interest rates is hectic, killing the people. It's going to start coming down to a wholesale price. Does that make sense? What will happen in the trend? And obviously, the smarter the home, the more the premium, the worse it is, the, it's going to get its wholesale price. Like, get in, get on, get out. It's like re coffee. There is a thousand, and we want to get it out quick so that it can move. So there's the, there's the price range. Let's say the best price, dear client, would be at 3.2. It will probably sell at the market at X. But depends, this is the quality of your home. This is the market conditions that we are at. This is the wholesale price. And, and, and hear me out. How will I really know these things? That script that we keep on talking about. Learn what to say. Where is your, your book? Did you hear right in the beginning, I said to you, that it's worth it to move to Margate. It was a simple Lightstone suburb report I pulled. And on there, I can tell you exactly what was the trend. I can tell you exactly what was achieved. Right at the bottom of the Lightstone, I can tell you even the bank's exposure because there is a report and a curve. How beautiful is the power of Lightstone and that, you know, so that it can you know, keep you informed the whole time. Factual. Listen, you also need to understand what is, you know, what has sold, etc., to be able to, you know, speak to your seller and give them the comparables. And this is what I want to say to you. Let's say it's a seller's market. Improving market, beautiful listing. I mean, it is the cherry in the suburb, we are going to achieve that price. If we drive the right photos, right market. But there's always that middle ground. Because of the trend, the softening of the market, the pendulum, remember. The time and condition of when the client needs to move. Most sellers prefer that middle market. How do I control that middle market? So that I'm not longer than 45 days to 60 on the market. Hear me out. If you are longer than 60 days on the market, you started at the wrong price, wrong marketing plan. And if you've had no inquiries. If you're 60 days on the market and you had 10 people through the property, two show houses, your price is wrong. You're busy now chasing wholesale. It's either the market is or there's something about the property that's not working. One of the two is going to change it coming up and down the scales. Does that make sense? So seller's market is always that middle gap of just the market. Look at the buyers. True story. Buyers are forever, no matter where we at, they start at, I want everything at wholesale. Remember, it's my money. The more money I spend, the, you know, the more expense is going to be. So in your pricing with your seller, you must always go. 
Mr. Saleh, this is the reality because it's super sexy. The market is great. We're going to achieve the premium. Here's the reality when we're going to have price reduction after the first show house, after the first 30 days. We want to still be in control of that market. Because if we're going to go into 45 and we've incorrectly priced it from the start, it is going to become wholesale. Does that make sense? And hear me out. The only person that loses when we go to wholesale is the seller. Because I'm still working at 6% plus VAT. Okay, it's maybe not going to be 300,000, it's 260, but I still get my fee. The buyer is still getting the asset at the preferred price. The only one that's losing is the seller on the net if we incorrectly price from the start. That parameter, because what we want to achieve, set a date and a time for everything, method in the madness. We can, you know, I know we are, I know we can control the, the, the mandate, you know, because we really want the mandate from Pam Golding. If you are going to overprice it a little bit for starters to win time in the market, you must have a date and a plan when you're going to bring it to, to sell a bill either between market and wholesale because of the market or the maintenance trend and condition that is going to, to affect it. Does that make sense? Dini, please talk to me. I just want to ask you. I have uh, somebody that wants to list, and the property valuation with the municipality is 2.6 million. Sales in the area in the last year and a half was between 750 and 1.7 million. And um, I had an individual, a friend of mine, a brother is evaluator. So she, he just drove past and had a look at it and he said 1.2. And then while I was discussing with her, she said to me when her when they they had evaluated out, out when a, a mom passed away a while ago, they evaluated it at 950. So I'm just gonna walk away. Or are you telling me, are you gonna tell me no? Look Where at the is pricing. the location of the property? Karlstraat. Where? Karlstraat. Oh, uh, Skumansville. Yeah. So must I just keep on, you know, trying to, to get sense? Yeah, here's and the simple thing. What here's the simple answer. Nothing in our town. Dini, Dini. Yeah? I'm so sorry your seller is so stupid and that she was happy to pay that expensive rates and taxes. Because the, that municipal valuation doesn't sound right. So sorry for her. She didn't check her account. She just thought the government was good to her. So your buyer is going to pick it up because there's a problem with that rates account there. Somewhere on the valuation roll a couple of years ago, somebody didn't focus to contest the valuation they attached to the property. Simple, Dini. Pull the registrations in Carl Street. Then mm -hmm. you, um, for the past two years, and take a list of everything that's in the market in Carl Street. Then you will see um, uh, the middle, and then it's simple. And then you'll see what is the average, what is the average, and if she is at X, buy a, buy a donkey for the geleentheid, maar tot sigs. Okay, time over task, it's not worth it. Thank you. That sounds like that property is going to sell on an auction in any case. No, I just I just don't want to give up, you know, I don't want to think that, I don't have the tenacity to work through it. But somehow I'm just looking at this and thinking what you are saying, time over task, is this really worth the while? That's exactly what happened. Thank you for that. Renee or also in the beginning of the call said she went to look at the stock and she is not willing to take it on. She's not going to sell it. It's not at the right price, not at the right condition. The thing she saw this morning, we are actually in an improving market. But she sits with a condition and time problem right at neglect and maintenance. So Renee must almost list this at 20% below wholesale to get a result. Almost. To be able to get rid of it. You, Dini, can also, listen, don't just throw it away. Weigh it up. Because if you can get it at the right price at the right time, 
everything will sell. And there's a buyer for everything at the right time, at the right price. I did the calculation of what the mid, uh, did I went through the pricings. I actually went through the pricings and I pulled the lights down up the street and down the street. I used more than 60 registrations over the last few years, okay? The average for that falls nice on 1.4 million. Then that's the price. The house that's maintained. And this is also neglected because remember, her mom passed away, and after her mom passed away, it wasn't well maintained. So, um, if, she, if she's not going to budge on the price because municipality said 2.6, so there's this huge gap there, and she does not want to hear it. So, I was just thinking, must I just go back and back and keep on telling no, her? No, no, that you've just answered yourself. Just you've just answered yourself. She doesn't want to hear it. So, um, then my, my answer to her would be, please take your rights account with that 2.6 and go and stand at Muddy Bing in Brits in the queue. And please ask them to come and re-evaluate this council valuation. Ask her to do that. And then when she's got the new council valuation, she must phone you. She's right. going to phone you and come back with, hi, Dini Askis. Now she's going to come back and say, I've been paying those rates in Texas. Yeah. Um, guys, can I please just say to you what happens uh, um, as well is that sellers do exhaust agents. Dini has now run up to X and now Dini is going to walk away because time I've a task with the money and conversion are not going to happen. Then she's going to do the Remax agent. Then eventually Pam Golding gets it at some mandate eventually nine months later we have to take the thing off the market it's you know it's 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 so de uh, uh, broken up to that point dinny and the scary part is what you also need to explain to her is if we price it incorrect the holding costs during the process and what you are going to get out you will still get to your time and condition okay there's extreme shifting market. What will the future premium be if we are at top? Sellers in an improving market, everything is the best. Or what will the future quick sale, wholesale? And, and this is almost where I want to get to and say, uh, where's that slide? Oh, there it is. Sorry. No, I just wanted to make sure that I do my slides the wrong way around. Right? So... There's a little overpricing exercise, and I want you to go through your stock. And that's why private property, property 24, I keep on repeating it the whole time. Whatever is in private property and property 24 must be in your shop. The customer is going to walk past your door and it's going to go to the competitor. Or at least know what is happening with it, what is the process, how long it's been in the market. That infantry and the, the history and the probability of the infantry, you have to be in control of it and know it the whole time. It's the most powerful script for you during lead generation. There it is. There is the probable anytime income. What is the value of your stock book? How much of the true value of your stock you are going to turn into money? What is the time frame around all of them? Mindset. Step a little bit out of your business and look from the outside. If your total listing value is 10 million and you are only going to sell three of it in the next 90 days, then you're probably going to only get X amount of income in six months' time. In the agent toolkit, I have got the agent cash flow. And it's split up, and you will remember when we went into the agent financials and tracking your numbers, we were talking about the 30, 30, 40. 30% fixed expenses, 30% cost of sale, and 40% should be your net profit. That is actually when you're driving a team. The number in the secret is actually a single agent should be 30% um, expenses, 70% net profit. Why? 
because that 70% is creating and gearing your cash flow so that there is money for the admins and the teams to expand into a seven or five level team. If you want me beside myself, because I have got a passion for property and people. Can you hear me? What do I do? I spend more time on private property, property 24, checking people out. Because I'm a stalker. That auntie in Katu that keeps listing. I want that auntie of ERA. She's my capper. She is our next partner in this business. She is the most valuable stakeholder that we can recruit. Does that make sense? Like I need to look at the back at all the appointments I've had and people I'm trying to recruit into the business. Can you imagine I bring the wrong person into our business? In fraud, Apple, how it will change the entire business. We have all contributed and worked so hard to make a pivot a success going on to two years now. Everybody is benefiting as a stakeholder. Like I have to slash and burn and go, mm-mm. Here, my auntie from Porch is not going to be part of this business. That's going to make everybody go. Does that make sense? It's almost like the other day I, I said in one of our team leader conversations, I think in future I'm first going to recruit, get the person comfortable, and then I'll have a mass recruiting appointment. I'll invite all my business owners in pivot and say, come check Tani Ansi from Katu. Let's decide if we want her as part of the party. It's exactly Create a one-line list of all your stock. Easy. It must, and I know you know all your stock, but you don't know all your stock. When there is 60 or 40 listings, you're not going to remember everything. Uh, and there's nothing more embarrassing when you walk into a listing and you haven't seen it maybe in a month. And all of a sudden, the seller has put a brand new whatever up and didn't tell you. Ne? You will blush. Write down selling price to expect. Write down the bet your life price. Communicate that number to the seller. Be the whole time in pricing counseling if you go to bed. I know it sounds terrible. It sounds like Rala just want these poor pivot agents to have sleepless nights. But you are a business owner. okay? You are a grown-up. I just want to make you aware of the following. That is the value because then you need to look at it and going uh how long am i been holding on to this listing how many people did i get through is it worth it because my nightmare is if i open private property and then there where it says day listed uh 7 february 2019. nine out of ten times that i endorse agent left that pop-up shop somewhere number one Number two, the poppy in the office that was supposed to delete and update the things didn't do a proper job. Now that feed is hanging there. It's negative for the agent, number one. Number two, it's negative for the perception for the market. And number three, it creates false delusion. Or you will get a agente that hang on to a, a listing of six years ago, but it still gets good inquiries. Then it won't and leverage buyers from there. That is a lazy agent. Let me tell you that. That is not a property professional. That is an estate agent. Estate agent to me is the most ugly word because it sounds like you're working with dead people's money. So realtor or, or, or property professional. Reduce, retrench, or release. You either bring the price down on it if there was a movement. Retrench. I'm so sorry. I'm very grateful, but let's let, let's just cut these ties because we're not going to get an answer. Or the arse, release. Okay? Redo, rewrite, create. It's in, out, or let's change. Does that make sense? But slash, the whole time. On that cash flow, because if you've got all your expenses at the bottom of that agent um, and, and cash flow spreadsheet and the probable uh, uh, sole mandate you put in at the top of when they should register and what amount you're going to get, I can already tell you where your tipping line is. 
where your capping line is, where your profit line is, because that way we're going to control the top line and to control, I mean, hello, the quicker you cap, the quicker you are in profit. Doesn't that make sense? Please go and do that calculation, that one liner. What is it and what should be the best and what do I think is going to achieve? Revisit cash up in your business and you must cash up. Like you check your appointment, check your contacts, check your conversions. You need to check your stock the whole time. So, so I've put this there, my home is amazing and unique. I've never heard a seller that doesn't find two or three sexy points in their story. Because there's always that something, I a belief in, I get me the best price. Ooh. We always want the most for our money. Straight? My update should return retail price. Rolo, I can see stupid me. I can see on private property that homes in this area are going for 3 million. And now you want to sell it at 2.4. Are you a typical estate agent that just wants to make a quick buck by low pricing it? Have you heard that one before? Oh, Rolo, yes. just put it. Oh, thanks, Dini. Thank you. Rolo, where are you going to advertise it? Because sellers has got this thing, if it is in the in-flight magazine and if it is on private property, Property 24, and it is in the local Ivongo Herald newspaper, and, and, and they expect you to spend X amount of money on the marketing, hunting on like a V8 bucket. That is just to keep them happy, to classify them. Hear me out. Your database. I, I get it. Marketing does bring the buyer. I get that. But it doesn't sell the home necessarily. It just brings the client. The selling of the home is in the agent's ability to control the pricing, the conversation, and facilitating the process. And that's you. You know that little, let's make a note. The less we negotiate, the more you make. Because you will get a seller that will start negotiating you from valuation till the day the property transfers. The whole time, negotiating, negotiating. Nema, what van dit? Or can we please this? Or, I mean, we haven't even had an offer. Ne? The buyer has only come for a second viewing. Guess what the seller says? What are, what are you thinking they're going to offer? No, they haven't discussed it with me yet. But I mean, in conversations, um, um, they know. That's the price. Are you negotiable on your commission? Instantly. It is like you hit me in the head and I'm going, listen, it's mandated at 4.5. You signed the mandate at 6 plus VAT. If my offer is going to come in at 4.5, where, where now? Then I get this. Ya Marala, you sold it in three weeks. Do you still think it's fair that I pay you 300000 Do you think this face and this amount of sexy and ability comes for free? I mean, really? The estate agent gets the tip on the toe slip. Right at the end, the attorney, SARS, everybody got a new house, the seller got money, the company gets paid, and what's left? The till slip tip is for the Ayendom's agent. Dear seller, are you aware I work on risk from the day we go to the market? And I'm the last one in the queue that gets the money. Yet, we haven't had activity and you want to negotiate my fee. But you signed for it at six. That little forumpy when you went into theater, where you said, whatever utensils they need to use in theater is going to cost extra money. I'm willing to pay for it. Same story here. Yeah. The buyers knows the market. If you want to freak me out, is if I go out with an estate agent and I can hear they what, 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 what. 
And then I know, okay, this poppy doesn't actually know her market because I am a buyer that only became a buyer two hours ago. And the internet has got all the information. Buyers are not stupid. There is so many tools to educate them. Educated sellers with a plan, you must make your seller feel in control. You suggest a plan and it's almost like they're keeping you accountable to that plan. The moment you make them feel in control and that you show up when you said gives them confidence and trust, lesser negotiating, easy selling. Marketing of individual homes is to keep the seller of our back. No offer in two weeks, we are overpriced, period. Five viewings, no offer, overpriced. Pricing is the only reason why a property does not sell, dear seller. And that will always be the reason. Any questions? Anybody want to talk to me about pricing? I'm a little bit over the time. I've got more time because I've got all my favorite customers on the call. Anybody want to contribute? Ask me questions. Did you find that aha or that moment understanding you are the starting point of the pricing? Because you, on the day you walk in, determining your outcome and your money. So if you want to be... It's horrible to say, but if you want to go in number one with a stupid plan, it's going to come out at the end with a stupid amount. And that's not worth it. I want to protect you against yourself and make you aware of please plan accordingly. High monthly costs always pay, play a negative impact on movement. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. That holding costs. Because it, it's there. It's there on the 25th of every month. Yet, it comes off the list at the bottom. In, 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 in the auction world, <coughs> and I've had quite a number of inquiries of people wanting me to do the uh, uh, one on, you know, the 110 things about auctions or the intro on auction. How does it work? The paperwork, etc. I am planning to fill that and you will see it happening just to empower you with what is the behind the scenes and how does the entire auction process work so that when the seller confronts you with that conversation, you can already educate him of what the probabilities and the processes of auction. And that is really when we get to the reserve price in the auction pricing, that's where we really go to wholesale. I always say if there's no, there must be four Ds involved. Otherwise, it's not an auctionable property. The only thing that must be missing is death. Sorry, there was another message here in the chat box. Let me just have a look here for a second. Um, our value of a one-line list. Yes, please, uh, 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 Dini. It's purely because the more you look at that little list and you keep adjusting it, the more you'll be aware of what your conversions and effort must be into money. Oh. Anybody else that wants to share and talk to me? Anybody want to give me an action plan? I know there's going to be a lot of one-liners today. Andre is packing up in Gauteng. He's moving down to Margate. Please talk to me. Anybody? Renee, yes, please talk to me. Um, our training, I think of two weeks ago on Property 24, I um, don't know who the lady was, but she said Ina, that Ina, Ina. Ina. you can go onto the alert, um, agents can go onto the alert, and I think I found that very resourceful, because I've put on the alert in my area, so every time somebody registers something, or puts it onto Property 24, I've got access to it. So now I can see all the new properties coming up and also their prices and what's in that range to make an um, informative comparative marketing analysis. Yo, thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing that. Renee has really empowered herself 
where there are CMAs on on that, uh, uh, um, knowing this, the infantry list. Renee, you raised your hand again. Sort it. Oh, I so maybe this. Sorry, say sorry. again. Sorry. Um, also, this um, CGI, I think the it's, it's going to empower us to see at a glance what our salaries could be and de determine what we need to do and what we don't need to do. Sure, sure, sure. Can you, can you hear what happened with Renee and the Kellerisms? Renee is very Kellerized in the conversations that are busy happening. Yes, please, Renee. Big aha. That is the 135, the 411 going hand in hand with your CGI is exactly the business plan and your roadmap. Go and look on, on, on my YouTube channel. It was the second shift training. We started six personals getting your head in the game. And then we went into your business plan, your 135, your 411. And then we tied your time over, your effort, your business with your plan. Please go and have a look at those again that are available on, on YouTube. Anybody else? Read MRE8, please, because I'm going to blow you away next week, Tuesday, kicking off the first part of MRE8. Then I've got Milani Enslin, your all meta on Ignite. That'll do the second topic. The fourth topic is, uh, the third topic is Liebu um, uh, Pashwana. He's, a, he's also faculty accredited. He's been the MCA of the Edenvale Market Center for for years is is really knows and why i've given him that section and asked him to do it is because he's the mca working with an entire market center of 120 agents finances and stuff as the mca look he's got obviously a team but that part when he comes on mre a third topic is really going to be that number tweaking understanding and and, and he's going to bring other tools to you and then Sean will be after that on um, the MREA uh, fourth topic um, is about your, your um, organizational model. You know, what happens in your business, how it should be structured, your organogram, and what the different people around it should be. And then the fifth one will be Vanessa Chaplock, where she's going to go on lead conversion. The day Vanessa Chaplock realized this person over this time is going to bring me X amount. That's when she changed into a multi-million team. Um, she was a, a single agent for years running. 70, 30. And then she went into a 30, 30, 40. And then I'll close off the last topic um, um, of, of the MREA. I really appreciate your time this morning. And thank you for always being on the call. And I really hope you can find the value and see, we come from contribution to assist you to careers worth having, lives worth living, businesses worth owning, and that legacy worth leaving. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Andre. Have a fabulous week, guys. And we'll see you at Agent Hour again if you need assistance on Thursday morning. And remember, I always welcome R2 Recruit if I can help you grow your um, pension plan. Have a fabulous day. Thanks for your time. Cheers, Dankirunal, Dini, Cheers, Manda.